Okay, today we're going to discuss all about the filarial worms. Okay, the filarial worms are actually your tissue and your blood nematodes. So most likely they are inhabiting, infecting our blood stream, our blood vessel, our lymphatic vessels, and even our subcutaneous tissues. Okay, for the general characteristics, so we have here the stages. So basically, your filarial worms divided here into your adult stage. Okay, the adult stage is almost uh, the same with all your species of your filarial worms. So they are thread-like, so very fine, thin na body, but, but again, the body is still cylindric, cylindrical or round body, making them as your nematode. That one is creamy white. So again, all of your uh, all, all of your species here are would have the same characteristics as that. Another one, they have the the larva stage. The larva stage here, you call it one as the microfilaria. And in the microfilaria, they are differentiated from one another by the following. So we classify them as either those having a sheath and those do not have the sheath here. So this is your sheathed na species. So basically, uh, this based on illustration, so we have here the tail end. So pag after the tail end, beyond that one, there is an additional na parang transparent sheath. So making that one a sheathed na microfilaria. On the other hand, other species here, uh, after the tail end, wala silang sheathed or sheath na, okay, na extension. So they are unsheathed. So later on, We'll be dividing the species here as to the sheathed and unsheathed. Okay, for the different species of your filarial worms, so we have here the, okay, so we have that sheathed and we have also here the unsheathed in terms of their microfilaria. So for the sheathed na species, that includes here your Wozneria bancrofti, and we have also the Brugia malayi, and we have also the Loa Loa. So, which is urban crafty, the habitat here. So just refer to your PowerPoint for that. So what's urban crafty is the habitat of that is your lymphatic vessels. So it could also be found in the peripheral blood. So the microfilaria are most likely in the peripheral blood, and the adult worm could be found here in the lymphatic vessels. The what's urban crafty try to inhabit here your lymphatic vessel below your diaphragm. Brugia malai, on the other hand, try also to inhabit here our lymphatic vessels. Again, the adult worm, try to inhabit here your lymphatic vessels above your diaphragm. And the microfilaria could also be found in the bloodstream. Loa loa could inhabit here our bloodstream. And then the adult worm could be found here in your subcutaneous tissues. Could be found here in your eyes. For the unsheathed species, we have your Oncocerca volvulus. This one could not be found in your peripheral blood. It could be found here in your tissues, basically your subcutaneous tissues or subcutaneous nodules. Pag sinabing nodules, para siyang uh, tumor-like uh, encapsulated in the nodules or capsules. Then we have here your Draconculus medinensis. This also could be found here in your visceral organ. Again, pag sinabing visceral organ, those are your hollow organs, in your, especially in your abdominal tract. Pag sinabing vis hollow organs, those are may mga spaces in, your, in between of your different internal organs. They could also be found here in your subcutaneous tissues. And it will, anyway, we'll be discussing each of that as we go to different or to the individual species later on. Okay, now we go to the vectors. So, we have here your blood nematodes. So, the blood nematodes here includes your uh, Wachere Bancrofti and Brugia Malai. Again, the vectors are mosquito vectors. So, this includes here the genus of mosquito for your Wachere Bancrofti. We have your Aedes, we have your Anopheles, and we have the Culex. In terms of your... Uh, Brugia malayi, this is also transmitted here by the bite of the mosquitoes belonging to the uh, genus Aedes anopheles, Mansonia, and we have Argenaris, na mga genus of the mosquitoes. 
for your uh, tissue nematodes, so we have your loa loa. Again, it's being transmitted here by the bite of your um, chrysops species. That includes your deer, common name we have here the deer fly. We have also here the mango fly, okay, or simply your tabanib, something like that. Okay, locally, okay, that the vector is known here as the tabanib. In the case of your Oncocerca volvulus, so that one is transmitted here by the bite of your black fly belonging to your genus Simolium. In the case of your Draconculus medinensis, this one don't have a vector but would have here the intermediate host. The intermediate hosts here are small fish or crustaceans, you call it one as your cyclops or you call it one as your copods. Uh, anyway, of all our filarial worms, we consider the conculus medinensis as not a true filarial worms because again, the stage of this one do not involve the microfilaria, but rather it involves here the rhabditiform larva. Okay, now we have here the general life cycle of all your uh, filarial worms. Again, this Life cycle here is applicable to all your filarial worms except your Draconculus medinensis. Okay, we'll be discussing the life cycle of your Draconculus medinensis when we go to your Draconculus medinensis. For all the other filarial worms, again, you get infected here by the bite of your vector. Okay, so th those are your arthropod vectors or blood-sucking insects. Okay, so in the mouth part or the proboscis of that, what is being given to you will be the L3, the third stage larva, or microfilaria. So I try to bite here the human host and then eventually try to introduce here your L3. And the L3, the third stage larva, microfilaria, try to develop here, go to the okay, to the final habitat that may be in the form of your lymphatic vessels. It may also go to your subcutaneous tissues depending on the species of your filarial worms where it eventually try to develop here to become adult worm and once it become adult worm then you have your adult male adult female worm that eventually try to lay here the larva your first stage larva or the first stage microfilaria you call that once your l1 again this is a larviparous na parasite I um, mean to say they are not laying egg, but rather they are laying the larva, or you call it once your viviparus. Okay, then your L1, try to go here to your bloodstream, but also go to your subcutaneous tissues. Again, it depends on the species of your filarial worms. Then, uh, in the bloodstream of the infected patient, for example here, then here comes here the second, the vector, uninfected, takes its blood meal, so one is try to ingest the blood here of the infected the patient. In the blood of that, it contains your L1 that will be taken up by your sterile na vector, the second vector. And once you take that one, the blood of that infected patient, inside the body of your vector, the L1 would eventually transform to become L2. And finally, it become L3. Once it become L3, this third stage microfilaria try to migrate up to its mouth part, or you call it monster proboscis. Then the cycle here continues. We have here the manifestation of your um, disease associated with your filarial worms. So we have here the elephantiasis. Okay, elephantiasis is the enlargement of your body cavities or even your extremities. Most likely, elephantiasis is associated with your blood uh, filarial worms. So, we're talking about your Brugiamalayi and we have also your Wachiria bancrofti. We'll be discussing later on along ang elephantiasis. Okay, another manifestation we have here the okay, the early manifestation of the infection characterized here by Okay, the fever, the flu-like symptoms. Uh, we have also here your lymph pangitis, lymph adenitis. Okay, anyway, we'll be discussing it later on along then. And we have the late manifestation. Okay, the late manifestation is signifying here 
okay, your elephantiasis is, is considered to be um, a manifestation of a chronic infection. So, I mean to say for those patients who are we're in the infection has not been treated, it lasts for a longer duration of time, that's become a chronic infection. And elephantiasis, again, is a manifestation of your chronic infection. Example of your elephantiasis, so pag sinabing elephantiasis, lumalaki ang mga extremities or even your part of your body. So, an example of that, we have your hydrocell. Hydrocell here is uh, enlargement of the scrotum basically on among the male patient. We have also here the lymph edema and manifestation of that. Okay, for the general diagnosis, so for those na mga filarial worms where they are found in the peripheral blood, then you could have your blood collection for identification of the microfilaria. Okay, so you could have your thick and thin smear for identification of that, except your those mga filarial worms which are found in your subcutaneous tissues. Okay, so like your oncocerca volvulus, your draconculus medinensis, again, they are not found in your peripheral blood, and therefore, um, they are not ideally could be identified by your thick and thin smear. Then we have here the term periodicity. So periodicity here is a time of the day where in the microfilaria is present in highest concentration in your peripheral bloodstream. So we need to consider here and we need to know what would be the periodicity of your filarial worms because this is this would identify what would be the best time for you to collect your peripheral blood. So we have the term nocturna. So this um, mean, meaning to say the filarial worm here, or I mean the microfilaria is present in highest concentration during the night time. Specifically, we have here 10 p.m. This between 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. The urinal, on the other hand, is the manifestation of the parasite microfilaria present in highest concentration during the daytime, approximately, approximately that's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Subperiodic periodicity, on the other hand, so that's any time throughout your a.m. or any time throughout your p.m. Hindi siya namimili. Unlike this one na pag nocturna, so nasa 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., something like that. Pag non-periodic, non on the other hand, okay, pag non-periodic, on the other hand, so this is the type of the periodicity where in the parasite here could be found in highest concentration regardless kung anong time. So anytime you can collect the blood, Provided that the patient is having that uh, fever, most likely. Fever is the best time to collect the sample. Okay, then in your PowerPoint, we have here the different uh, provinces listed in our country, which has this uh, very prevalent uh, filariasis. And notice here that Palawan is also still prevalent in uh, ang ating filariasis, the same way as the malarial infection. 